that most of you will be using for the course uh, project part of this course. So you can find Champsim in this course GitHub as shown here. So uh, well, one thing that I would like to mention beforehand is that the version of Champsim uh, in the main Champsim repository, which is here, uh, is now different from what is present in the course uh, course uh, courses repository. Uh, this is because the developers of Champsim uh, has merged all the changes made to Champsim over the past few years into the main branch uh, around a week ago. Uh, uh, putting it simply, Champsim went through a complete overhaul and things like building and stuff uh, are completely different from what it used to be. Uh, even the internals like the API, the class variables and everything have changed a lot, deprecating a lot of things. Uh, either way, uh, for the course project, we highly recommend that you use the version of Champsim that is present in the courses repository here. Uh, this is because um, all the papers uh, whose Champsim implementations are publicly available uh, have been written for this version, uh, which remain the same for more than around two years. Uh, so you will not have to deal with the messy stuff like refactoring their code and all, and it's going to save you lots of effort, like seriously. Uh, so anyways, uh, some of you uh, already know and played around with Champsim, uh, especially those folks who had uh, taken CS305 course in the last semester, uh, which was also taught by Professor Biswa. So if you haven't taken the course or you uh, don't know Champsim, uh, no worries. So the first thing that you might wonder is what exactly is Champsim? Uh, so putting it in simple terms, it is a simulator for doing microarchitectural research. Uh, which, uh, you know, takes a trace file as input and it spits out some numbers quantifying how a system with some pre-specified configuration uh, perform on the trace file. So now you might uh, have a question like what exactly is a trace file? So actually there is no fixed definition actually, uh, but uh, you can, you know, think of it as a special file that takes uh, uh, that contains the runtime dynamics of a particular program. For example, uh, the list of instruction pointers, the load uh, store addresses, uh, branch information, and uh, other things. So I won't go into the uh, more details actually because that's completely unnecessary to be honest. So that's uh, all about basic introduction. Uh, so uh, first I'll talk about building and running Champsim first before moving on to more details. So building and running Champsim is pretty straightforward. Uh, for building, you simply use this uh, build champsim.sh uh, script that's available in the uh, top level directory. Uh, it takes the following arguments. First is the uh, branch predictor that you want to use. Uh, next one is the uh, level one instruction cache prefetcher. So, uh, next is level one uh, data cache prefetcher. Next is, uh, you know, uh, the prefetcher at level, level two cache. And the final one is the uh, prefetcher at last level cache. And the next one is the replacement policy that you want to use. And the final argument is the number of CPU cores that you are compiling Champsim for. So this will build Champsim and the build binary would be present inside a uh, new folder uh, named bin. Uh, for example, these are the binaries that I previously compiled. Uh, so anyways, so running Champsim is also pretty straightforward. Uh, so what you have to do is you have to run this uh, script name run champsim.sh, which is also present under the top level directory. Uh, so the uh, uh, command line arguments that it takes are the name of the binary which was uh, present in your uh, bin folder. Like you have to uh, give uh, the complete name of the binary uh, as a command line argument. Then next is the number of warm-up instructions, number of simulation instructions, and the trace file. And the final uh, uh, command line argument is uh, uh, is optional, which you shouldn't uh, bother with because you you won't be using it for the most part. So this will start the simulation process and uh, depending on the number of warm up plus simulation instructions, uh, it's going to take some time to finish. Uh, so uh, after it finishes, a text file inside a results directory would be created, which uh, uh, for example uh, here, it contains the results of the simulation uh, like uh, IPC, which is uh, instructions per executed per clock cycle uh, and other uh, stuff like your number of load accesses, number of hits, number of misses and everything. Uh, so anyways, uh, that's all about running uh, Champsim. So one thing that you have to keep in mind is that uh, if you change even one parameter in the source code of Champsim, then you'll have to rebuild Champsim again before running the simulation. So anyways, uh, the next thing that I'll go very briefly uh, is the code layout of Champsim and how you can use it to test your own ideas or try out uh, new implementations. So first is the branch uh, directory. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, 
So anyways, uh, this uh, directory contains uh, the branch predictors that uh, Jamsim has. Uh, so if you, want a, if you want to implement a new branch predictor, all you have to do is copy a template, let's say by model. Uh, uh, by the way, don't get uh, confused by the weird extension. The, these are all C++ files. Uh, so anyways, uh, you have to copy a template, uh, then rename it your uh, whatever uh, name you want to give, uh, then uh, clear all these contents like these global variables and the contents of these functions, but do not uh, delete these functions. So what you have to do is uh, you have to fill them uh, with your algorithm and then rebuild Jamsim with this implementation and test out with, on some benchmark traces. Now, uh, just going through briefly, you can already know what this function means. Uh, you, you can initialize uh, your uh, internal data structures of your algorithm, whatever way you want uh, in the call to this method. And uh, predict branch method basically takes an instruction pointers input and it returns a Boolean, which says true if you want to take a branch and it, uh, you should return false if it uh, if you want to predict that branch will not be taken. So this uh, function, which is last branch result, it takes an instruction pointers uh, as input and also the result of whether or not the previous branch was taken or not. So depending on uh, what the result was, you can change your algorithm uh, internal, uh, you know, uh, values of the algorithm accordingly. So this was all about branch predictor. Uh, so next I will go through CVP tracer. Uh, this is uh, some directory that you shouldn't conserve it because it's completely irrelevant. Uh, next is INC directory, which is basically the include directory that stores all the header files that uh, that are used throughout the source code. Uh, so you'll find lots of tweakable parameters here. For example, in cache.h header file, you can uh, tweak the configurations of caches. Let's say, for example, uh, you want to change the number of sets in your uh, level one data cache, and actually you can just uh, keep put a new value and rebuild Jamsim and run your simulations with it. But uh, do not forget to change the latency uh, if you change the, uh, you know, change the number of sets or number of ways accordingly. Uh, similarly, you can change the configurations in other uh, modules like your DRAM controller. For example, you want to change the row activation time and all. You, you just need to uh, tweak all these parameters here. Uh, so anyways, that's for include directory. Next is the prefetcher directory. Uh, this stores the list of prefetchers available. Uh, writing a prefetcher is similar to writing a branch predictor, which I described previously. Uh, so if you're interested in writing a prefetcher for your course project, then I've written an extremely detailed guide on how you can build your prefetcher with Jamsim. Uh, it describes the prefetching API, which is kind of uh, relatively more complicated compared to your branch predictor. Uh, and similarly, uh, I have also given an example uh, statement like uh, this is your question and you have to implement the prefetcher based on this. So you can go through uh, this guide if you're uh, really interested in building a prefetcher because it's not very difficult. Uh, uh, so anyways, uh, this is the prefetcher. Similarly, the replacement uh, directory contains uh, all the replacement policies and writing a new replacement policy uh, is similar to how uh, you can write a prefetcher or your branch predictor. You basically have to copy this template. Uh, then you can just, uh, you have to rewrite uh, your algorithm in these functions and build Jamsim with uh, the, your own replacement policy. Uh, maybe you can try out implementing the replacement policy paper, which was discussed during how to read a paper lecture for fun or maybe for self-learning. It's up to you. Uh, so next is the scripts directory, uh, which uh, stores the scripts for downloading uh, the trace files uh, for spec 2017 benchmark suit, uh, which is around 20 GB. Uh, so anyways, uh, this is uh, the SRC directory is the main uh, directory of Chamsim, uh, which contains all the internal implementation of all you know, uh, modules like caches, DRAM controller and other stuff. And they are pretty big uh, with around, around uh, how much? Around thousands of lines of code for each actually. So anyways, uh, tracer directory uh, stores the code for creating the tracer using Intel spin tool, which is a dynamic binary instrumentation tool, uh, which you can use to create trace files for Chamsim. And this is mostly irrelevant for us because uh, for the most part, uh, traces of popular benchmarks like Spec 2017 are already publicly available for academic research. So this was all about Chamsim. Uh, so if you have any questions, uh, you can ask now. Hello. Does anyone have any questions? Well, I guess no. So anyways, uh, I'll give the link to the guide which I've written uh, in the chat so that uh, you can refer to it if you're interested in building a prefetcher for your course project. 
So you can uh, refer to it. Uh, it's kind of incomplete at the moment, but uh, uh, I'll try to complete it as soon as possible. So yeah, that's it. That's it from me. So yeah, uh, that's uh, all about Champsim. So uh, you can leave actually if you don't have any questions. I'll be here for five minutes. Can you also share the Champsim uh, GitHub link in the in the chat? Ah, uh, actually, it's present in the courses repository. Okay. I had I had posted the link in the Piazza itself. You can go there and uh, you know uh, uh, check from the list of repositories in the courses uh, GitHub account. Huh, the bushes, you can start mm -hmm. the recording, I think.